full warning before this video starts. It is July 4th. I'm recording this on July 4th night. So you might hear fireworks in the background. I don't know. I If you hear a bang, it's most likely fireworks. I hope it's fireworks. But <laughs> if, if you hear that, it's what it is. And uh, just so you guys know, and you don't think I'm in the middle of a uh, shootout happening in my neighborhood. Um, <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. Um, but uh, no, I, if, we're reviewing uh, the Flash 105. Uh, if you haven't rewatched the episode yet for the rewatch series, you can go rewatch it and then watch the review. Or if you remember the episode, just keep watching the video. It supports me, and I appreciate it. And let's jump right into the review. So. This, was, this episode, I think, was really, really, really good. I think it's the best out of the last four. Um, you know, I said that for 104 last week. I'm saying again for 105, you know, now. I think it's the best episode of the series for the first five episodes. Um, we, I, we got General Eiling this week, which was, you know, his first appearance. We saw Grodd at the end of the episode, which is CGI obviously changed for Grodd. You can tell that. Um, Bear ran out of water this week for the first time. He ran up a building as well. And, uh, yeah, that's the review. No. <laughs> uh, but, no, uh, Barry, to discuss the Flash for a moment... <laughs> Uh, he did run up a building, run up on, run up on water. Yeah, that makes sense. He ran up a building, ran on water. Um, both were amazing scenes, you know. Um, obviously the running on water scene, it kind of took away from the emotional aspect because, uh, I think her name was Bet, uh, who was a bomb meta where she touched something and it blows up. She ended up pushing Barry early on in the episode, and his suit blew up. And Cisco got all pissed over it, which is hilarious. Um, you know, especially since we know Cisco a lot more now, it's even more hilarious because he does love his suits. You know, he loves the super suits that he makes. So, you know, <laughs> which I think we've known that for years, but it, just seeing Cisco's reaction to that, it was it was hilarious. So know what we know now and know then, it was just hilarious to see again. But, um. You know, she touches things, it blows up. And there's a really funny training scene with her where Cisco brought a boomerang, which isn't smart because it would just come back and blow up in their faces. So, you know, but it was, her character was really cool. But the problem was that they couldn't keep her around because what could she do? I mean, she blows stuff up. You can't have someone there that blows stuff up. She can't be a hero. And granted, she was a soldier, and she did save lives, but, I mean, she can't do that anymore. Um, so Wells, or Thawne, gave the soldier one last mission to kill Eiling, and then Barry arrived to stop her from doing that after Eiling and his crew, his, his crew, his soldiers were had arrived. And, uh, but Barry somehow... This is why, like, season one, I think we let a lot of things loose because Barry is getting used to his powers, right? Past season one, it's like if Barry's a gunshot go off, you should be able to catch that bullet, right? Grant, he could have in season one, but this is five episodes in. And Barry heard that gun go off, but every time he could react, I mean, she was already dead. I mean, the fact he can move is like 600 miles an hour because he just ran out of water this week or, or that week <laughs> in this episode. It's just like, you got to remember that this is not like season eight Barry or season four Barry. This is season one Barry. That's still learning how to speed properly and you know, all that. So it, I kind of had to remind myself that this episode, because I'm, I love season eight Barry. I, I made that publicly clear <laughs> That what Eric Walsh did for Barry when he joined the show from season 6 to season 9, regardless of my opinions of 7 and 9, I mean, I think it's fair to say that some of the coolest things that Flash has done is in those later seasons. Especially season 8 and 7. <laughs> um, and that's because of Eric Walsh's ideas. I mean, you know. And we don't see that in season 1. Season 1, Barry's learning how to use his speech in 2. He's still learning season three, he's still learning season four, he's still learning season five, he's still learning 
2006, he's still kind of learning, but he's more advanced with his powers. In 7, he's really advanced. Just saying he's perfect, and just 9, it's... We don't talk about it. But the point is, <laughs> you, you kind of have to remember when we watched Season 1, at least for me, I had to remind myself that this is Season 1. This isn't like, you know, Season 8, where Barry's OP as hell. This is Season 1, Barry doesn't know his powers fully, and therefore, you know, he's not going to be able to save her from a bullet. And also, you know, for plot reasons, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, but, uh, so Bear ran out of water. She blew up. It was a really cool scene. And, uh, you know, yeah. Um, Iris spotted the streak for the first time and started writing about him, aka Barry. But you shouldn't know it's Barry's point. She just thinks it's the streak. And, uh, you know. It was a whole, it's going to be a whole arc, I think, for a while, from my remember. This is one, because this is a big thing. I mean, it's like you're writing about, like, imagine if Arrow had a report on the show writing about Oliver being the vigilante, right? And they put their name on it. Now, I'm bringing up Arrow because I think it's the most more realistic than, like, the Flash aspect of it. That's why I'm bringing it up. Like, again, like, Arrow... Some, a reporter was talking about the, the vigilante, and they put their name on it. The number one problem with the Flash and the Iris scenario, which would be the same if it was any other superhero in this case, obviously besides Supergirl or Superman, because they're the reporters of their own story, and you know they can protect themselves. But with any other superhero, if you have a reporter report on them, and they put their name to it, they could be targets for criminals that are trying to get to that hero or vigilante. Like The Flash, like uh, Tony Woodward, I know does in a couple episodes from now, gets two IRs to contact The Flash because she also has connections to him. Because her pie line is, you know, her name's plastered all over all of her blog thing. And it is, you know, as... Now, I'm not a reporter, but... You would think as a reporter that you would have some brain cells left. And also maybe listen to the guy telling two people in your life, three people, telling you not to post this. A cop, a CSI, and a superhero. Maybe listen to them. But at the same time, I don't mind it because the scenes of the Shriek and Iris... I, we're like, Iris doesn't know that Barry's the Flash or the Streak or whatever. And, you know, then switching between Barry and Iris, where Barry's just Barry. It is a really cool sequence. It's just, like, is Iris really this stupid? I mean, her dad's a cop who knows this stuff. Her future husband, which, I mean, you know, I guess brother at this point, is... <laughs> is <laughs> They really were brother and sister, huh? They 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 just, they they screwed each other. But like, <laughs> I don't recommend doing that. Uh, not that I've done that. I would never. I don't have a sibling. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Um, but <laughs> no one clipped that. I'm not popular enough for people to clip that. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, god, I don't remember what I was saying. Uh, like you have two people in your life who are cops. We're gonna see PD all the time. And then you have a superhero telling you not to do it, and you do it anyways. Like, I get it, Iris ignores everyone in her life. It's who she is at this point. But it would be nice if she at least considered listening to them. Like, I know later on in the episode, Barry, like, you know, told Iris that, you know, he's not going to be around her anymore because he doesn't want to really blame himself if she gets hurt. But it's understandable, you know. But, again... You think this would get through to her, but it doesn't, and that's the problem that Barry has later on. That's the problem that Joe has later on. It's the problem that Iris has later on because she doesn't listen to Barry and the Flash and Joe. So it's just, you know, again plot, but it's also like a character development that Iris has for years and years. She doesn't listen to anyone, and I think that's something that, you know. Needs to be, I guess, remembered more as we are going through the show that, 
Iris really is stubborn. You know, I mean, I guess that's... I wonder where she got it from, Joe. Uh, but, no. Um, I remember, like, Cisco got a crush on Bet the bomb meta. Um, which is hilarious in its own little way. And, uh, again, Grodd. We saw Grodd for the first time this week. Eiling and Miles obviously have, like, a pass. Not a good pass. And, uh, you know, I think wants to know more about the Flash and know more about. I'm assuming that's later on. I don't think he mentioned the Flash specifically this week. But I know that Thawne will eventually tell Eileen that, you know, his name is the Flash and leave him alone. But I think, I mean, even season nine, Eileen was a problem. I mean, they, you know, we didn't see Eileen as in season nine. But if you remember, I think it was 904 or 903. Where it was brought up, I think it was 903 specifically, where they were breaking into the DOD to get tech that before Red Death's crew stole it, but they couldn't get it because Eiling was the chief there or whatever. They couldn't get through Eiling. So, you know. But it's also amazing that he didn't get fired after everything he did in season one. I thought that was said that he did. I guess Earth Prime changed some things, Crisis changed some things, but, you know. Or maybe that's just our legal system at work. I don't... <laughs> it's definitely one, the two. Maybe it's both. I don't know. But, yeah. It was always interesting where Eiling's character went. Because, you know... Season 1 was the last thing we saw of Eiling. Like, we didn't see season 2. Or season 3 or 4. Which, I mean, kind of makes sense. Because what was his purpose? I mean, you know... We didn't really have a reason to bring Eiling back. But it would have been cool to see him, like, once or twice... You know, maybe Barry, when he was in prison in season four, that would have been really cool to have Eileen, like, in jail or something. I don't know, and entering with Barry would have been kind of funny, but it also would have been maybe a little bit scary if you found out Barry's a Flash, which I guess he already knew, right? In season one, I think he found out. I don't remember. But, um, yeah. Overall, it's a pretty good episode. Probably, uh, nine out of ten. I mean, it, it was, I think it was the best episode so far out of the last five. I think this is. Probably like 105, 104, uh, 101, 102, and 103 is how I'd rank the last five from best to worst. Um, mainly because I don't remember a lot of 103. Um, or for that matter, 102. <laughs> but, you know, the last, the first five generally aren't bad. Um, you know, I don't think this, this season has a lot of really good episodes. But there are moments in the later on, like the back half of the season, where there are some moments that are kind of like, could be written a lot better. I think even 102 or 103, I was bringing up how it could have been written a lot better. Um, in season two, it's just like, you don't see that that much. Because that's like they've been doing it for a year, right? And Grant is just being the Flash now for at least a year. He knows how to play this character better. So we get kind of out of that in season two, which is good. But, you know, season one does have some flaws. But, you know, I think we make up for it because it's so iconic. Right? The point in time has never been done before. Um, what they're doing. So, you know, I think something that we need to remember when we're watching season one. That this is iconic when, when it was done. So, yeah. Thank you guys for this video. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And I'll see you next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.